Hi, and welcome to the Gathered Knitting Circle. My name is Jana, and I'm coming to you from Germany, from a little town called Göttingen, where I study musicology and art history. Um, so this is a little um, video podcast where I show you all the things I've been knitting. Um, it's also sometimes about other crafts, but mainly about knitting, all the things I get up to. Um, yeah, and also today I'm going to show you just some finished objects, um, yeah, some things that I'm currently knitting on, um, and maybe some future knitting plants. Um, yeah, those are the things I'm going to be talking about. Mm. So yeah, without further ado, I guess we just start with finished objects and the things I'm wearing. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe the quite obvious one, which is this cardigan. Um, I've been showing it in my last episodes and I'm not finished. I'm really happy with it. And this is the, the Maya cardigan by Helene Magnusson. I believe it's an Icelandic designer and I'm really happy with it. To me this is a very special project um, because if you watched the previous episodes you know that um, we've been to Gotland for holidays which is a little island in Sweden where they have this very special sheep breed the Gotland sheep and um, yeah, when we were there just in different um, locations I was picking up a skein of pure Gotland yarn um, just yeah here and there so I had a collection of five skeins in the end when we left the island again and well I decided to make a cardigan with it which is this one um, so yeah it was all like kind of different weights and um, it, like it, the, the yards didn't perfectly match but I made them <laughs> match kind of and I think it, it turned out really well um, yeah so this this cardigan has some color work on the sleeves and down here and um, I knitted bottom up um, knitting the body with the stick stitches here and um, the sleeves and then join them all together for the yoke knit the color wood yoke and then I sticked it here so um, with the sewing machine I secured the edges here and then just cut it open and um, yeah I'm really happy with it um, as I said many times before already <laughs> um, yeah those buttons I made them myself as well because I thought well just yeah let's go for the the whole handmade look um, uh, maybe you see they're really not perfect at all they're really not even uh, there's just one button yeah it is they're not the same at all it was not round at all but I don't really mind it I think it looks quite nice I really don't mind in my in my projects I don't mind it so much when it does look like handmade because it is <laughs> so why not show it um, I made them with some olive wood scraps that I had um, yeah one day is a few years already ago I ordered on eBay, I ordered this big bag of olive wood scraps um, for a relatively cheap price and they're just so beautiful. So yeah, I was just like roughly cutting some circles out there and then just sanding them a lot. And then I oiled them a bit. Um, yeah, and now I have my buttons, um, my handmade buttons. And I think they go quite well with it. Like some buttons I think they could have been a bit bigger because sometimes they slip off 
but well, I don't mind it, it's okay. Um, yeah, this is just such a, yeah, such a special project to me. I was first struggling to finish it a bit because I was hoping I would have finished it like on holidays while being in Sweden, but I didn't finish and then I kind of didn't feel like knitting on it here because then I, because it, I wanted to have all these memories woven in it, um, if you will. So, but then last week I went to our little flat in the mountains where I was knitting on it and then I finished it and it was really not so much to do anymore. Um, yeah, and then it was rather quick to be finished. Um, yes. Um, well, while talking about this, we could also quickly talk about another whip that I have here, which is also connected to the yarn. Um, because I did have a bit left, like I was struggling with the, the this very dark color because that I didn't really have enough. So here also the bottom bands, they're, they're not the same color. I don't know if you can see it. I hold them next to each other. They're not the same color, so I was using another color then. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of this one left, which is this white because this I had these two and they look quite similar. Just that this is a bit more like a bit warmer white, and this is a bit gray. It has some black specks in it. And, um, but because it only has this one light color, um, yeah, I chose to use this one. And now this I didn't really touch, even though this is a very soft one. This is, I think, like they're all a bit different to touch. And I think this is the softest of all. Um, yeah, so I was looking for a project to use up all the scraps. And then I only have this much left of a the gray. Um, so I was looking for a project to use those up just because it's such a special yarn to me and um, I, I cast it on the it's a, it's a little shawl it's called the age of brass and steam kerchief by orange flower yarns and this is oh this was the wrong side <laughs> this is what it looks like so far it's yeah, basically just a garter shawl and then it has every now and then these um, yeah, this little panel with like yarn overs um, yeah and then here also it has this um, yeah this edging with the yarn overs and yeah, for this I'm planning to just yeah, like do one color after another and then just use it all up. And then I guess the last one is going to be the white. I'll just do as much as I want. And then I'm also going to have a shawl to go with the cardigan. Um, yeah, that's going to be nice, especially because this is so soft. I mean, this is all very rustic yarn and like it's not like merino or something soft but like um, compared to other rustic yarns this is relatively soft at least I feel like it is um, so yeah that's what I'm gonna do with all the with all the scraps uh, I mean this is not really scraps but with the the remaining yarn from the cardigan um, yeah there was this little intersection with the <laughs> with the whip, but there's still a lot of finished objects. Um, maybe just shortly about what I'm wearing here, the hat. Um, yeah, it just looks like a very basic hat, I guess. But <laughs> it was actually... Um, because by now, maybe you know if you watch some other episodes, I'm usually not so... Like, I don't plan my projects so well. I usually just go for it and try things out. That's what I like to do. 
So um, this was going to be the contrast racer bra, but it just made designs, which is a bra, not a hat. <laughs> but I just used this, the wrong yarn. I had this left from another project I did this summer, and it was just too thin and too see-through. So it didn't work out. What I did is then I, I folded it, like all oh, this is, is double. I folded it in, security, the edge, and I just did some crown decreases and I made a head from it. Um, yeah, just because I didn't plan this project too well, I was just, yeah, just took any yarn really. This is the Sommer Seide. Um, yeah, this is, um, I think, by, yeah, by Landlust. I don't know. I think it's also Lana Grossa yarn. And um, this is 50% cotton and 50% 50, 50 silk. So it, is, it has a really nice touch to it, a really nice feel to it. Um, it's not particularly warm. Um, like, it's not really a hat for the real winter. But, like, for now, it, it's fine. And it's just, for me, it feels really nice on my head. And really comfortable. Um, yeah. So yeah. Then afterwards, I knit this pattern again in a different cotton yarn. I showed it um, in the episode about my summer knits, my holiday knitting. Um, so it, it is a great pattern. It was really nothing about the pattern. It was just about my yarn choice. Um, but yeah. Now I have a hat, and here I don't know if you see it. I have this little tag. On it, it just says handmade. This one I got in a yarn shop in Sweden as well. Um, yeah, just so it's not too boring that hat. Um, okay, so now we have quite some other finished objects. Um, um, quite some sock knitting today. <laughs> so one of the finished objects is this sock. It's not the right size sock blocker, so um, <laughs> it looks quite big on it. Um, which, it, like also on my feet, it's a tiny bit too big, but I don't really mind it because it, for me it's quite comfortable. Um, but these are the the grow socks by Fiber Tails, and um, it's basically just they're a bit wrinkly because I've been wearing them already. And now they've been in the wash and everything, like waiting for the wash, so in the laundry basket. Um, they don't look too great at the moment, but yeah, they're basically yeah, very basic socks, but just with this very beautiful detail here, and with this yeah, kind of a leaf motif, which I find very beautiful. And while I'm here, I did a reinforced heel fluff. And I don't think in the pattern it says to do so, but I was really just until here I was following the pattern and then I did my basic sock recipe and didn't really look at the pattern anymore, so I don't really know what it says then. <laughs> um, just because this, um, I know how to do it and I know that it fits my feet, so that's what I usually do. Um, yeah, these socks I've been wearing them a lot, also for hiking and these kind of things. And they got a bit faded here and here, but yeah, I guess it just makes them stronger. Um, this is knit in Tuku wool, uh, which I got when I was in Berlin. It's a Finnish sock yarn, so it's the sock, um, the sock yarn by Tuku wool. And um, yeah, I had to get another skein. I said that in the other episode already. Because I didn't realize it was only 50 grams that I had bought, and well, I didn't manage to make two socks with 50 grams, so I was a bit upset about that. But yeah, um, those are these socks. Very happy with it. And then I have another pair of socks, and these I've showed also a few times. These are the rainy day boot socks by Isis Crafts. So 
what they look like. I have knit them before already in the kids size as a gift and then I really wanted a pair for myself too. So they are um, they have this nice pico edging and then some color work here and then also again I didn't follow the pattern anymore and I just did my basic sock recipe and yeah these are the two socks and um, I really like them because my boots they go exactly until here so um, only this pico edge um, shows I think it looks quite cute and yeah, I really like those as well these I've been knitting from a cone of sock yarn that I have maybe I should do it it's just over here it's this cone that I got in the Wolffabrik in Hamburg um, yeah it's I have two of those it's a nice green color and I think it's 75% um, wool and then nylon and I've been knitting a lot of socks with this already and I'm still going to knit a lot of other pairs with this and then the color work I just did with some scraps that I had here um, don't really know anymore what it was <laughs> um, yeah those are my finished socks both I've been wearing already a lot and um, then another finished object which is really just not so exciting um, because I've been showing this a lot already um, is the Felix cardigan um, by Amy Christophers and now I finished I did exactly the same version for um, myself just gonna close the buttons here so I can show you better. I did exactly the same for myself this summer and I've been wearing it a lot and then my grandma saw it and she said she wants one too. So I made her a cardigan too with exactly the same yarn, exactly the same everything <laughs> and also the same buttons and yeah this is what it looks like um it's a basic cardigan a lot of stockinette and only here it has those um yarn over details um just on the increases and yeah it's not blocked or anything the back is just very basic um so i still need to book it but this is one of the many uh, christmas gifts done already um, so yeah, that's that's good that I managed this already, but I really need to wash it now because I've been knitting this a lot in Berlin, like in the um, the subway and everything on buses and the train, so it's really quite filthy <laughs> by now because many times I drop the the ball of yarn in the train or something and then just rolls around and all the dirt so I really need to wash it um, but yeah now I showed you now it's done and um, gonna be gifting this one so a little sip of tea and my cute cup that I got in this pottery in the um, or mountains where I've been this spring. Okay, um, and then there's another, well, actually, another two finished objects which are kind of connected to my holiday knitting because, um, also in Sweden, not on Gotland anymore, but in the mainland. Um, I got this very special alpaca yarn, one skein of it, um, from a yeah, place where they just had like a few alpacas, I don't know, maybe, maybe like five or something, and um, they were selling the, the yarn from it too, 
Well, there was just one skein left. I got the last skein. And um, yeah, the, the special thing about it was that on the label it said the name of the alpaca who gave this wool. And um, then the lady who sold it to me, she showed me then, because outside they were just grazing all the alpacas, she showed me which was the one that gave my wool. And um, it was called Stiana, which means star. And yeah, then I then I saw Stiana outside and I took some pictures of her and that was just really special because usually you don't have this connection to the actual animal, right? Like when you buy buy yarn in the in the yarn shop or something, you don't know what the animal looked like that gave this wood. And um that was that was quite special to me. So I wanted to make something really nice with this with this one skein of yarn. So when I was um, in the mountains now, I started to knit some wrist warmers with it. And yeah, this is what they look like. They are the Hirtra mitts by Fiber Tails. And yeah, that's what they look like. I think they're really beautiful. They have here just this, like a lot of um, garter stitch and then this nice cable going up and then these, these, um, yeah, what you call them, like those braids, they're really beautiful, I thought. And that was something new, I learned how to make those, that was quite special and I find them so beautiful. And then it just goes long way here in ribbing and then it's just folded down which makes them really nice and warm and here's the thumb also um, very nice and warm and yeah, I've been wearing them a lot already so I guess you can see it that it has all this fluff coming out so I mean I know that this because this is so soft right it's really really soft and I know that soft yarn is really not the best to like to last for a long time um, and that it will get a lot of peeling and everything but I hope they will um, yeah, last me still a bit of time and I'm really happy with them and this is just such a special project to me too <laughs> like this cardigan and then um, I had a tiny bit left of the yarn so I made also the Hydra, Hydra headband also by Fiber Tails it is, it is really the same if you see here it's the same cable pattern and the same braid but just on a flat piece and then seamed together and um, also this is really nice and soft and for me really comfortable to wear it's not the warmest because it's not so wide like it really just goes over the ears but like for autumn it's really perfect um, at least for me I really like it and um, yeah so that was luckily I, I, I managed to make this out of the same skein still and then I really had just a tiny bit left so um, that was really lucky I managed to make the most out of this one skein and I thought that was really really good and really successful um, yeah so this is another finish object I think yeah, this was the last finish object now we only have whips left <laughs> so I hope you're not bored yet um, because now we're gonna come to all the whips um, yeah also sock knitting again um, well this is the kind of half finished object because one sock I finished already that's what it looks like it is the spring frost by the petite knitter and it's an all over colorwork sock 
Um, yeah, it's got a, the afterthought here. here. And um, I really like this sock. Well, first of all, because of the beautiful pattern, but also because I'm using quite a special yarn here. I mean, these two colors, they're just very basic sock yarn. It's the Mylan White by Lana Grosser. This is just yeah, the, the sock yarn that one gets here in the yard shop. Um, but then the yellow, or this mustard color, is a special yarn. Um, you know, I don't have the label with me, but it is with hemp. Um, so I think it has, like it, it is wool, a bit of nylon and then 10% hemp and that just gives a really nice feel to it like sometimes you can see it it has those sometimes those hemp fibers looking like sticking out um, and it gives it quite a nice structure like it really keeps its shape and yeah, it doesn't go so floppy or anything so it really, yeah, hugs nicely around the foot. And that I really like about this. This was very expensive. Um, I think it's called Admiral Hanf. Um, but it was quite expensive. Like that's what I could, why I couldn't afford to buy all the yarns from this brand. Um, but yeah, really beautiful yarn, really beautiful. <laughs> um, Yes, and then, um, this is a story of a rather failed project. It was going to be also a sock pattern by the Petite Nitte. Um She just has really beautiful sock patterns, like all over color work, um, and I'm, yeah, I'm really loving those patterns. And I want to, yeah, I just really want to let all of them because they're so beautiful and then um, what I was showing you last time maybe or the time before these three sock yarns that I dyed myself and these three colors um, yeah, with walnut, um, beetroot, red kale, turmeric and yeah, all kind of different things really. It was really just an experiment. It was my first time doing natural dyeing. And um, yeah, those are the colors I have. So what I casted on was the foxtail socks by also by the Petit Litter. It's what I look like. And I was really not happy with it. That's why I took them off the needles and I'm gonna unravel them um, because these colors they're just really not so great for color work because there's too samey and not really like the contrast doesn't really show and then here I, I first I, I made this the fox in this brown color from here but it really didn't show at all and then I was I, I undid it until here again and redid the foxes um, just with another scrap of sock yarn that I had and yeah but I don't I just don't like it the colors so much I, I just don't think they go so well with each other and yeah I was really not <laughs> enjoying it so I decided I would knit these socks with another yarn just yeah, some yarn that has a better contrast and um, yeah maybe like a nice this nice fox color like a rusty um, orange something um, but yeah just not with this one but what I did instead with that sock yarn is I did a very basic striped sock and I think this is just so much better um, because it really shows like all the variegations in the hand dyed yarn and I think it shows up the colors so much better 
Um, yeah, with this one, I'm quite happy. Well, except it, um, I think I, I really don't. It, I, I think it's not really the colors here. Like here, I like the colors, but here it's more the just the yarn itself. It has, I think, 20% cotton in it, and I think I really just prefer woolen sock yarn without cotton. Um, because what what I said about the um, the other socks, the spring frost socks, is that they keep the shape so nicely and hug around the foot. But these ones, they don't really. They you can also see it here. It's quite floppy. <laughs> like it, it isn't really, yeah, stays so nicely. If you know what I mean. <laughs> I hope you do. But yeah, with the colors, I'm really happy now. And um, yeah, now I'm knitting on the second sock. Um, it's a mess, of course. Um, so I did the heel and yeah, now I'm on the foot. Um, yeah, I think that was just a much better idea to knit this with the hand eyed yarn. And I'm sure I'm gonna knit those those foxtail socks in rather near future too. Um, yeah, those were the socks. That's all the socks, but I have two more whips, works in progress. Um, maybe just this one quickly. This is what I was knitting on before. Um, this is another gift knitting already for Christmas. And it is the Flux by Tinker Knits which is a quite a nice basic um, jumper it's for free on Ravelry and um, yeah it's just a basic raglan um, pattern and here on the arms it has those pearl panels and I did the um, the barley socks by Tinker Knits and they also have this pearl panel on the front of the foot and that just made them fit so nicely so I was hoping this will fit nicely too because of these pearl panels and um, yeah, I'm knitting this in just some leftover yarns that I'm having so this is the size um, 2 to 4 year old and yeah, this is uh, for, for a friend um, in Colombia, so that's why I need to need to knit it now so that it will arrive for Christmas there. And um, yeah, these are just like all kind of um, super super wash um, merino yarns that I'm using, and I'm just doing the stripes. Like I have this green and this blue. And I'm just yeah, doing it quite randomly, doing some stripes. So I just use it all up. And um, yeah, hoping that it will turn out all right. Yeah, I have quite a lot of gift knitting to do until Christmas, so I'm starting already. Um, because it's going to be quite a lot. Um, yeah, but at the moment it's really hard here. I don't know if it's in other countries too, but to order yarn and because I have all these projects in my queue that I really need to do under Christmas and it's just so hard to yeah to, to find yarn for it um, because like all these websites where I usually buy yarn they're just totally overcrowded and then it always get, I always get these messages like they can't keep up with the orders at the moment and it's gonna take some longer time um, until I get my order and everything like this so that's a bit annoying because like here I, I, do, I really don't have a yarn shop where I would like where I could find those kind of yarns that I need for my projects because usually yarn shops here they're full of like Lana Grosser yarns and those more like <laughs> fancy yarns 
um, but I really like those rustic ones and yeah non super wash bulky rustic yarns like I love to knit with the Icelandic yarns like I love her slopey or let lopey um, yarns like this but the, the Icelandic yarns there's just no chance to get hold of them anymore um, so I was looking for alternatives and um, yeah, I had been using the um, um, Natur Uld by Hertiska. Um That was quite nice too, or the um, Drops Snow. But um, also, there are so many colors are sold out now, not in stock anymore, and um, it's just a bit difficult to you now get hold of all that yarn. Um, but yeah, that's another story. Um, but maybe if you have some suggestions of like rustic, not super wash yarn, I also really like it when it's not so solid the color, when it's more like yeah, it, when it looks more bit natural, if you know what I mean. Like for example the um, I love with Lopi, it has all these yeah like different fibers in it, not different fibers but different colors, like different colored fi fibers like a bit brighter and a bit darker spots in it and that I really enjoy but I find it so hard to find it somewhere else in, in a different yarn and but also yeah <laughs> you know I'm, I'm studying so it needs to be quite affordable because yeah those other yarns I really just can't afford um, so yeah, maybe if you have something, so a suggestion, um, maybe you can leave me a comment that we have for. <laughs> um, but yeah, now we just have a very last project here. It's not much to show yet. It's really not much, but I think it's going to be a nice project. It's going to be really nice, and um, it is going to be one day the um, Selbu Kaul by Knitting Tradition and um, I think it's quite a um, traditional Norwegian pattern on it which you don't see yet <laughs> because this is really just oh I just lost the stopper it's really just the ribbing and a tiny bit of color work here um, well, but this is going to be a cowl and um, I was showing you this um, yarn in another episode this is the Metamorphosis sock um, by Malabrico and this is the number 322 Marrakesh that's the, that's the label and um, yeah, I got this one also in Berlin in the shop, the yarn shop Yarn Over Berlin. And I just love the color so much. I just found it so beautiful. And because it's called sock, I was thinking, yeah, I can make socks with this. But then I realized that it's really just one fade. Like it starts with the dark color and goes uh, like lighter and lighter. And um, so yeah, I didn't really know how to make socks, like two socks with it that are kind of the same looking. And um, yeah, because <laughs> I, d I didn't want to buy a second yarn, a second ball of this. Um, I decided to just pair it with another yarn and do some color work. Because I think also in this, the, the fade is going to show really nicely. And I paired it with this. Um, I have another one here, it's alpaca yarn, that's what it looks like, um, and this is um, Bahertje Gan as well, which is a yeah, Danish yarn company I think, and this is 100% alpaca, it's very 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 soft and it's really beautiful I think, so that's uh, what's happening here. And 
I think it's gonna be really really beautiful. Was because then the, the background of the color work is gonna be this one, so it's gonna sh change so nicely from this brown to the to the mustard to the yellow. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be really beautiful. Um, yeah, that was my last project already. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little chat about my makes. And um, yeah, I had to uh, I had to record this episode twice because the first time it was not in focus, so that's why this might be a bit behind and a bit late. Um, but yeah, I hope the quality is okay now, and um, I hope you enjoyed this little talk. And yeah, let me know what you're knitting on. Um, I always find this so inspiring. Actually, now <laughs> talking about inspiring, in my last episode, that, that's what I'm going to show you real quick now. In my last episode, I was talking about this um, yoke, what I re -knit and the old yoke I just felted it and made these little Christmas ornaments with it and um, then a viewer um, suggested in the comments to just take two of these and sew them together and stuff them so that I would make these ornaments like three dimensional and I thought it was a great idea so thank you for that and um, yeah this is what I tried out and I thought it turned out really nicely um, this is what it looks like now and yeah I just took two of these little um, things that I had made before and sewed them together with this stitch and um, yeah just stuffed some like some like ends when you weave in the ends just the cut off bits uh, put them inside um, here's another one so yeah that was a really nice suggestion and I thought it was so cool to have this interaction and people inspiring each other um, yeah because I feel like this is so that's what all this crafting is so much about like not really just me sitting here and doing all my crafting business but inspiring each other and I I think that's really beautiful that we're kind of creating this um, community here um, so thank you for that and yeah again do leave me a comment what you're working on um, I really appreciate them and yes, I hope I will record another episode soon um, because I'm really in a knitting mood so I'm knitting so much these days and um, yeah, I'm really excited to make so much so yeah, I hope I can keep you updated with that and um, yeah, we'll see each other in the next episode until that, stay well and keep on knitting. Bye!